Hi, I'm Tim Kinlaw, an Esri instructor. Today I'd like to talk about deep learning. Deep learning can be used in image classification. Image classification is all about turning pixels into meaningful information. Here we're looking at a satellite image, and in it we can recognize buildings, trees, roads, cars, a lake, and other features too. With traditional image classification, every pixel in the image is used in analysis and is put into one of such classes. But what if you only wanted to extract the pixels that represented a building? That's where deep learning steps in. Let's take a look at how to do deep learning using Map Viewer Classic. Let's find the deep learning tools here in Map Viewer Classic. Under raster analysis and deep learning, we can see we have multiple tools. We'll choose detect objects using deep learning. Here we can fill out the parameters. We'll start by choosing the image. We'll search for the USA NAEP imagery from ArcGIS Online. NAEP is the National Agriculture Imagery Program. So here we'll find it and select it. Next, we need to choose a deep learning model. Creating a deep learning model is often a barrier to using deep learning, but we do have many deep learning models available for free on ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World. Here, we'll use the building footprint extraction model. So we'll select it. Now we'll give the user interface a moment to refresh. It's querying the model arguments. It will show us a couple extra parameters we can use. We'll talk some about them later. We'll give it a new name. And before we click run, we'll set the analysis environment so that we set the processing extent to the Arboretum bounding box I have here for Charlotte, North Carolina. So we only detect objects within that bounding box. Before we click run, we'll click show credits to see how many we'll consume. Looks like one credit, not bad. Now we're ready to click run. Deep learning can take a bit of time. So we'll give it a moment here to display the results. And here we can see those building footprints in the Arboretum of Charlotte, North Carolina. Now let's explore this data by zooming in and we'll click on one of the features. You'll see that it's given a confidence score. That's how confident the model is that that group of pixels is a building. Some of them are higher, some of them are lower, but notice that they're all above 90% confidence. Let's switch to another web map that I've made that has more analysis results based on the exact same model and data. Here we can see that I have three layers, one called 90% confidence. It has those same default settings. But I have another layer here called 70% confidence. It's displayed in light blue, whereas the defaults are in dark blue. I'll turn on the 70% confidence, and all I did was I changed that threshold parameter that we saw earlier in the tool to 0.7. That tells the model, report back the buildings that have at least 70% confidence as opposed to 90. And so here we can see some of these features have lower confidence. Now there was another parameter we could tinker with and it was the non-maximum suppression parameter. You'll see here in this area that I'm zooming in that there's an apartment clubhouse and it looks like it's represented by three polygons, which shouldn't be the case. You'll see one underlying polygon that makes up the whole area. And then there's two smaller ones that capture the north and the south wing. Those need removed. If we turn on maximum suppression, it removes those two lower confidence polygons. And so we have just one contiguous polygon that represents that building. So note that these are some parameters that you can tinker with if you're not satisfied with the initial results you get from deep learning. I hope this proves useful and I hope you start to implement deep learning more. Thank you.